Good morning. It's great that you can join the family of St Mary's Hitchin for this worship video. If you'd like to keep in touch with us and receive our weekly email bulletin, please send an email to the parish office, which is at Hitchin Parish Office at btinternet.com. The address should be on your screen now. And if you'd like to donate for the work of the church, which still goes on in these very troublous times, then please do have a look at our parish website. The address is on your screens. There is an online giving portal there. Thank you for your generous donations. A reading from St Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For, while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly, Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. 
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, from chapters 9 and 10. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
You receive without payment, give without payment. This is quite a difficult time for all of us as we navigate a new normal. And some things go back to normal, but of course some things don't. And there's still a great deal of anxiety about our health, the economy, the education of our children. And it's not surprising that we turn to our faith for answers in these difficult and testing times. What we seem to get sometimes from Jesus are quite uh, cryptic words that seem to be a paradox. He has says elsewhere in the gospel, those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. What are we to make of these paradoxes at this time? The Christian faith is shot through with paradox. St. Cyran once said that faith consists of a series of contradictions held together by grace. Of course, we see those paradoxes throughout the Christian faith. Ours is a God whom we find in the shape of Christ. We find life in the shape of death. We find grace in the shape of a cross. And we find light in the depths of darkness. The whole Christian story is shot through with paradox. We have a king who was born in a manger, a feeding trough for animals, who reigns from a wooden tree, a place of execution, who is lord of all and also servant of all. And for those who find these paradoxes rather fanciful, I say this, look at yourself. We are all a mass of contradictions. We are walking paradoxes. We all have a great capacity for good and a great capacity for evil. We are the chief of all creatures and also the chief sinners. And if we're honest with ourselves, there is a shadow self to all of us. The great apologist for Christianity, G.K. Chesterton, uh, looked at the paradoxes at the heart of the Christian faith and it drew him from an atheism to a real faith that has inspired others. He said that the paradoxes at the heart of the Christian faith were the beating heart of the gospel. Of course, Christianity itself is accused of being at times too optimistic and at other times too pessimistic. Sometimes the church is accused of being too bold and at other times too meek. And of course, it is all of those things at various times. Perhaps the problem with Christianity is that it's too hospitable to paradox. But paradox shot through uh, with grace seems to be the core of what Jesus was about. And of course, if God, the creator of heaven and earth, is to don human flesh, flesh like ours, then there will always be a paradox at the heart of our faith. So I hope you're encouraged that whilst we can't always see easy answers in the Gospels. Uh, our faith, when shot through with God's grace, is one that can hold each side of a paradox together. Things that may seem contradictory are held together in one. I think that's good news for all the world. Amen. Let us pray. We heard that Jesus looked with compassion on the crowds. They were harassed and helpless and didn't know which way to turn. Help us, Lord, to slow down, to clear our minds of anxiety and to hear your words of comfort, of guidance and of challenge. We ask your blessing on all those who are hungry for and yearn for you. 
May you guide all who seek, encourage all who lead, and walk with us as we journey into a new and uncertain future. Give us courage, Lord, and be a light to our feet as we go forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wisdom and of justice, we ask your blessing on all who are in positions of power, that they may use it wisely to further your kingdom. We pray for guidance on those who make decisions that impact the lives of others. Give them strength to carry the burden, wisdom in their decision-making, and humility to learn from their mistakes. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those sisters and brothers who feel excluded from our society, be it for reasons of race, sexuality, religion or health. Remind us, Lord, that each one is a child of God and precious to you. Help us to know the height and depth of your love for us and therefore your love for others and thus to overcome our own fears and prejudices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are sick today, those who care for them, and those who are alone or afraid, those who feel lost in a place of darkness. In a moment of silence, let us pray for the people who are on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for those who have died recently, those who are approaching death. Grant them peace, Lord, and hope at the last. In a moment of silence, let us remember them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you commanded us to see the world through your eyes, to stand up for the forgotten with your courage, to challenge evil with your anger. Remind us that you are not going anywhere, you are going everywhere with us, all the way. When we lose sight of you, Lord, remind us that you are the air we breathe and the light we see by. We thank you for your love for us and for all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us finish with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.